We had the most ridiculous recap of that tag team tables match last week. It's all in black and white. Why was this in black and white? It's all in black and white, and they're playing scary music. Were we supposed to think it was 35 years ago? Like the the wolf man or the creature from the Black Lagoon might attack. Then Goldie interviews Ron Harris and a wacky Australian. (laughs) I I died in this segment. (laughs) The end. There's a guy, (laughs) and they're like, this guy's from Australia. His name is... I don't even remember his they, name. They, they never gave him a name here. He got a name later. His Australian friend is all Ron said. Yeah. And so they do this, and then Don shows up. And then Ron makes some comment about, Don, we had an agreement. And Goldilocks is like, what's this agreement? And he's like... And then and then uh, uh, Don Harris, he does the old, don't worry about it, bitch. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, F- I'm so done with this show. But then immediately he follows up with, and hold that camera still! I don't like this MTV bullshit! I died. It was awesome. In 2002, <laughs> Don Harris was sick of this shaking camera MTV bullshit. <clears throat> and I was like, I never thought I'd say it, but amen, Don Harris. Stop with this MTV camera shaking fucking bullshit. If it makes a difference, this was Ron. I don't, I don't it was Ron? This is Ron. He was, he was talking about was. Don. So, uh, I like when he said, there's going to be a bounty on Harris and Storm's asses, and we're going to collect that. Who, who put the bounty up? <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought at first he was putting the bounty up and then going to collect it from himself. And I, I still don't know what the answer is. And it's only a bounty on their asses. Well, right. I think that's what a, about the rest of them? That's just a terminology. It's a, some, Are you sure about that? Well, no. It's DNA. It's Bring possible. their asses to me. But Leave just the their of asses. <laughs> Leave the rest of them there. The rest of them can stay. <laughs> you hold it like a bowling ball. Don't be half-assed. Exactly. Don't bring half their ass. So it's Chris Harris and James Storm versus Ron Harris and an Australian man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy from Australia. We got a name. Ashley Ozzy Hudson. Ashley <laughs> Ozzy Hudson. Yes, oh like uh, okay. uh, Ozzy is a nickname. Uh, no shit. Yeah. So I I had no the idea. Australian guy is a nickname. It's Ozzy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just well, Outback sure. Jack was taken. So I I I uh, had never heard of this guy. I had no idea who the hell he was. I looked him up, and he, he seemed like an okay wrestler, but uh, he was around for like ten years and retired in 03. So this is pretty much his peak right here. But I bring this up because I've learned that uh, uh, I was trained by Bill Dundee all this. But one of the ring names he used somewhere along the way. Ozzy rules. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he probably got to use that in too many places. <laughs> so there's a heat on James Storm, hot tag Chris Harris, who at this point, I'm watching him run the ropes and do like the running shoulder attacks. And I think, holy crap, 2002 Chris Harris. When he's doing that particular spot, looks like 2023 Takeshita. Big dude, long hair, running the ropes really good. But uh, eventually he's cut off. Ozzy grabs Chris Harris. Ron Harris throws a boot. Chris Harris duck, cr- ducks. Ozzy is booted. And Chris Harris pins him. And the story continues that although Chris Harris and James Storm are the world tag team champions, they only win because the other guys screw up. Ever. So They're uh, young. Ron keeps beating everyone until Don comes out and punches him. As you noted, everyone fears Don Harris at this point. <laughs> Goldie tries to interview Jerry Lynn, who has escaped the box. Yeah. The Flying Elvis says, tell her not now. And he does have an X Division title match right now. Who the so. fuck did they put in that box at one time? I think it was Goldberg. I think it was the Harris's. <laughs> it's, it's it was on Harris's. Thunder. There's always a box that a guy gets put in when these Harris's are they, they put a guy in a packing crate or uh, yes. uh, whatever you call it. And uh, Tony Schiavone passionately screamed, they put him in a box! And we laughed and we laughed and we laughed. So it's AJ Styles versus Jerry Lynn in a ladder match for the X title. We've seen young AJ Styles over the years. We saw him do a lot of really, really stupid things. And this is coming off a day or two after uh, I watched uh, Darby Allen do maybe the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I was horrified when they were there with the ladder. But this was, by all standards, relatively safe. As safe as you could do a ladder match, an X Division ladder match in 2002. Hey, throw a ladder in a guy's face so he get his hands up. When they did a slam onto the ladder, it was leaning against the middle rope, so it was almost like a like a slide it landed on, and it bounced. Then the, the splash onto that. Uh, when they did a suplex onto a ladder bridge on the outside, Jerry Lynn set this guy down as gently as humanly possible. 
It was all really, really impressive to watch. Uh, Lynn has his leg drop under the chair, and he's bleeding everywhere. The scariest part was actually they just did a suplex off a ladder, which is a big spot, but it's a simple spot. I don't know what went wrong. They both are flying sideways, totally out of control. But uh, apparently they're still alive. So Siaki gets involved again. So Jerry Lynn wipes him out with a dive. Then AJ wipes Lynn out with a dive. And he climbs back in the ring, and he climbs the ladder. He wins the X Division belt. So they did this long-ass fucking ladder match. 17 minutes. And literally, it was about the 13-minute mark. The ref took a bump. And I'm just sitting there thinking, why do we need a fucking ref bump in a no-DQ ladder match? Because someone's going to run in. So then, you know, I'm waiting for the run-in, and the run-in doesn't happen. And they wrestle like six fucking minutes before Sonny Siaki hit the ring. I was like, is that ref dead? Like, what the fuck happened? So they do the finish, because a guy got involved in a no-DQ ladder match. And then they bring out old, uh, old Bullet, Bullet Bob. And Bullet Bob comes out, and he rules, You think you're going to get away with that shit? Well, think again. I'm holding up this title. We're gonna, you guys are gonna fight for it again next week in another ladder match. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. There's only one man living who could book an AJ Styles Jerry Lynn ladder match with a finish necessitating a second AJ Styles Jerry Lynn ladder match. And I don't want to see the match, <laughs> but it was accomplished. Congratulations. Well, let's not uh, bury the lead here. Bullet Bob said, we'll do that rematch next week. And AJ Styles, you're going to be the challenger. Because I am returning this belt to Jerry Lynn. <laughs> so, yes, this here ladder match that we watched this week, officially, on the record, ended in a DQ due to a run-in. <laughs> well... I mean, technically, there was a winner. Yeah, he was stripped. But he reversed the decision. He, well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know what official... Do I need to look this up on fucking cage match? <laughs> I you will, like actually. To. All right, you do that. I will. I'll find out what they say. They did a couple of really cool spots that I actually haven't seen before. They took the ladder. AJ was on the outside, laying on the apron. They were near the corner. The ladder was against the post, and Jerry Lynn kicked the opposite side of the ladder, and it... Used it kind of like a, a teeter totter, and it flew into, into AJ's face. They did that a couple of different times. I had never seen that. The uh, ladder bridge spot would have been a lot safer if had they actually put the one end of the ladder on the ropes instead of on the ring apron. There was absolutely no give to this ladder bridge. But um, this was this was a very good match. I enjoyed it until the end. When I first uh, started watching this show, I had to scrub through it real quick to make sure I had not seen this episode yet. And I scrubbed to this match, and I was like, I think I've seen Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles in a ladder match before, so I think I saw this show. So I went to the next episode, and I scrubbed through that, and I saw another Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles ladder match. I was like, oh, no. what's going on? So I... Yeah, it took a little while to figure out what show we were watching because we were watching the exact same matches over and over again. Well, according to uh, to Cage Match here, uh, Jerry Lynn defeats AJ Styles via DQ. Okay. It was a DQ in a fucking ladder match. Wow. Don West, hard sell. He has a few matches to announce this week, uh, next week in a special appearance. AJ Styles versus Jerry Lynn in an X Division ladder match. A four-way, I believe he said an Iron Man match with Loki, Tony Mamaluke, Kid Cash, and Ace Steel. The SATs, as advertised here, will challenge Harrison Storm for the tag titles. A special appearance. Chris Rock will be in attendance, filming part of his movie, Head of State. You have a chance to be in the movie if you are here next week, Don Pushes. Plus all the greats like Six Pack and Scott Hall and Jeff Jarrett will be here. And go to the website and buy a shirt. So according to Meltzer, Scott Hall was not at this show tonight because his wife had just left him with the kids, so he called in sick. And he will not be there next week because he has a similar excuse. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so it's Brian Lawler and Jeff Jarrett versus BG James and Six Pack. BG comes out, talks more. He says, payback's a bitch, he says, and bitch was not bleeped. 
And the six-pack talks, and he mentions bitches like eight times. It's bleeped every single time. Uh, he threatens to keep banging April behind Lawler's back. But if you win, he says, maybe I'll let you watch. I thought that was nice of him. They had the most house show tag match you ever saw. There's the heat on James. There's a hot tag to six-pack. Lawler fucks up taking an X-Factor. And X-Pack makes a cover. There's no ref. Elix runs in, hits Pack with his own move. It's not the finish. Goes on for a while. Eventually, BG James gets a hot tag. His comeback is so old school, he does a noggin knocker. And he pins Lawler with the pump handle slam in about 10 minutes. You know, I was uh, once again entertained by Brian Lawler. He's He's now like... You know how they go, uh, a, a wrestler is a person with their personality turned up to 10. Sure. Uh, Brian Lawler has got his his personality turned up to like 20. Everything he does is so ridiculous. It's so over the top. When when X-Pac or whatever his name is made the comment about how I'm banging your wife or whatever, or what did he say? Whatever. I mean, Christopher's reaction to this was just like, it was beyond it. Like, even, even if he did, like, a Saturday Night Live skit with this, the guy wouldn't be this over the top. Christopher is just, like, ridiculous. And then he did more wacky things with the ropes. Like, he took these crazy bumps over the top again. So uh, he's entertaining me now. He's He's gone past, uh, like, irritating me to being so wacky that I am now entertained watching him. And uh, let's see. Elix Skipper attacks, Amazing Red attacks, the SATs Wait, attack. you tell me there were post-match uh, attacks? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, that would happen. Uh, it ended with all the heels standing strong and Jeff Jarrett whacking away with a chair, whacking people with a chair. What? Uh, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the, the uh, NWO running wild here to end Nitro is what happened here. Wow. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was just there. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I think we need to stick along just long enough to get through the real horrible Russo stuff with sports entertainment, extreme, and et cetera. Yeah. And then just, like, give up. <laughs> I just, I, it's this. The, you know what the problem is? The shows are too long. Yeah, they're too fucking long, and they're they're shitty. Yeah, and they're often boring. Right, and they suck. Sure, but I, I, I gotta keep going a little longer. Why? We promised the people. I think they would be very disappointed if we stopped before sex. <laughs> what? So this is all foreplay for you now. <laughs> This is the worst foreplay. <laughs> it's, it's going to be the worst sex as well. <laughs> hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.